Okay. Hey, I went to Trader Joe's. Yes, down in Virginia Beach. They ain't got no Trader Joe's. It's what, Norfolk, Suffolk, Chesapeake, Portsmouth. No Trader Joe's. But Virginia Beach, they got some Trader Joe's. Anyway, and look what I found. No, did I, I didn't find this. Did I, no, I didn't find this at Trader Joe's. This is some place that there's a really big, we was down there because it's a really good health food store down there. I forgot what it's called. Sorry. We, we don't advertise here, as you well know, because this channel isn't even monetized. Uh, anyway, hey, look what I got. What am I doing here? Put in there. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Dark, dark, dark. You gotta put dark in your body. That's all I got to say. Okay, maybe I'm wrong with that. You know. Oh, what is it? What am I got? You know, it's a rainy day. Why do I have something? You know, it is a rainy day. Okay, here's what here's what it is. Here's what it is. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. If I can read this darn thing. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where's the ingredients? Like I can read with you class on. Well, let me put it this way. It said, oh, here it is. Ingredients. Organic beetroot juice. Uh, organic lemon juice. Organic ginger. I love ginger. Okay, wait a second. Uh, organic turmeric. That's it. I found turmeric when I was traveling around India. So this is good for you. I know if you got a juice, you can do all this stuff. Yeah, but you know, what do you say? I'm, 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 a, what is, I'm a boomer. I got a little bit of money. I have enough money to make sure I'm sustained. You know, my body's, you know, you know, I'm not eating cat food, let's put it that way. Like a lot of people have to. Mm. And you know, you got to watch that beat. Ooh, it's a lot of beat. Nice. Mm. No, beat's got that, that doesn't look at what we got stuff to do. Um, oh, no, it's, still, it's hot. It's, I just came back. You know what? It's raining today, you know. But I still, you know, let me tell a secret. I got a secret for you. Okay, check this out. Like in, in the early, when I was in the Air Force, I used to get up in the morning and run about, you know, 6 o'clock. I don't run no more. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a runner. But I get up in the morning now, you know, to exercise, to do my little dance, my little dance walk, you know, to the park, whatever have you. And it's been raining a few days. But at 6 o'clock, around about 6 o'clock or so, no matter what's happening, if the rain lulls or there's no rain, it's amazing. I don't know how that is, but that's what happened. Okay, this might be a little bit long, one, so you might want to tune out and do something else because I got to record. I mean, I got to chronicle things. Yeah, just let me explain everything. To you. This channel started, whatever, 2014, whenever it started, and it started uh, mainly because well, uh, Alambi Breath. There was a funeral for Alambi Breath. I was in South Africa, and I wasn't there, but we got to. Remember. Anyway, I did a little thing, a two-part thing for Alambi Breath. That's what started, sort of started this channel. I think. I had, anyway, that's what started the channel. But then my thought was, you know, I was just going to basically chronicle chronicle my life. But let me tell you a little secret. People don't talk to elders. They just don't. <laughs> and I used to tell people, because I'm an archivist, I used to tell people to look, talk to you, you know, record your elders, you know, go da 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 And no, people don't listen. So what I had my brilliant idea, eh, eh, I said, let me just talk, you know, like a talking memoir. And because before, you know, the whole writing, you, you learn because your granddaddy or your great granddaddy, whatever, would talk to you. And you as a kid, you remember fascinating tales that you sort of pass it on. That's how you pass it on. But here's the interesting thing. I'm going like, okay, that's, 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 that's pretty cool. So let me let me just start, you know, waxing. So I started talking to this guy, uh, Brother Belly, down in uh, the, the library at Fort Hare, and I would just talk to him, you know. <laughs> and it, then I started, I developed a character, old man and whatever, and then he retired. So I had I moved my little setup into to the office, to my office at, at the University of Fort Hare. And I would I would do I would do stuff there, but it was more like ah, it was still a character, but wasn't whatever. And then uh, then what happened? It came to several. Then then when I anyway, it changed to several several iterations. I kept on recording and uh, just I just kept on recording uh, and just posting. You know, this this thing about my then things start happening like like let's like, say Black Panther came out, so I do a whole series just on Black Panther the movie. Um, and I would, I would find these things just as the, you know, just was just like percolating up. People would know about it, so I could chronicle it from from the beginning. So about about well, this is uh, just 2020, then it's 2019, 2018. So around the beginning of 2018, uh, let me just say this. Well, anyway, 2018, I had uh, I started uh, tracing my uh, AGOS. You know, that's when uh, uh, Antonio Moore and Yvette Cornell sort of came with and started chugging with that, right? And so uh, what I did was I basically, if you look at, there's a whole ADOS playlist. If you check from the beginning, you'll see my development and understanding of ADOS all the way through up until up until now. 
I haven't done a little ADS specific thing because um, my ADS setup is over there, right? And uh, I might have I have my brother's altar there because he passed and, and I did I did a whole nine night thing for him there. And then it's supposed to, oh let me explain that I did a whole nine night thing. I just show it. I just do it like that. See that's the ADS corner over there. Yeah. See it's over there. One more thing for the ramp. So um, I might put it back together now. I'm not really sure. Okay. Anyway, uh, so this space over here is just this space. Uh, and so, so since, since my the knife night was last night, mm, yeah, last night. So I took the altar down. Now, what's supposed to happen? Let me explain this to you. Nine nights. Um, there's a whole setup that you do, you know, with, with flowers and a vase and a, and a, and a cigar and and a coffee cup with a cigar on top. You do You have a white rum. Uh, food or oh, candles, two candles. Uh, what the hell back then? Anyway, things like that. Don't worry about it. If you're not in the culture, don't worry. This is Europe, so I remember. And then also, you have to feed every night. You have a little plate, and yeah, what you eat, you you give to, you know, you give to the altar. Because basically, I think. Oh, and, and then every night, uh, I mean, the first night is it's on the floor with a white uh, a plywood thing, the two by two, and then um, I put just a white uh, white uh, uh, what do you call that cotton towel over it, and everything is on that. Uh, and then, um, uh, oh yeah, also my brother's picture. Oh, yeah, that goes in there too, because this is where you're, you're asking the, the um, what do you call it? You're asking the, the, you know, the ancestors, whoever, to come and visit. And make sure he's, make sure he goes home safely. This is my interpretation. Um, oh, but I say, I'm not into religion. I have a spiritual advisor, David, David D. Wright. He's been for years. I mean, he's a, oh, don't worry about that part. We did a plate that was really good. Oh, yeah, it was really good. Won a lot of awards. It was a smash hit. <laughs> he wrote, I direct that. Uh, uh, great two days, was pr produced it. We've done it at the National Black Theater. Don't worry about all that stuff. Uh, and so, since I broke it down, now, now here's the thing. I break rules. I just do it, right? I don't know why, I just do it. So there's a certain thing. When you, when you do this altar, right, then when, you, when the nine nights are done, then you leave the altar up, right? And then, then basically, you, you, you keep uh, you the candle. Um, you just keep it up for as long because you, you're supposed to be in a in a in a, house, in a in a corner of your abode. Now, if you think about, it, just think about it. When these traditions started, this there was no modern world. So you had your hut. You might have a separate house for your for your for your for your altars for your ancestors or whatever happened. So you can maintain it every day, whatever. So let's say you know, hundreds of years later, we're still trying to do that, and. So my thing is like, well, I understand y'all in the religion. You got to do that. I, I know, I know nine nights from uh, when I was in the Central America, when I was in Belize, and and and, uh, and in uh, Guatemala. You know, the the the, the Garifuna culture they have nine nights. Um, so for me, uh, my thing, okay, the nine nights. I make sure my brothers, you know, send it right. And then the other thing is just for people to remember him by, right? So I just altered it and I put uh, his his picture will not go up on this wall with my my sainted grandmother. You know, like that. I guess we have to get a picture of a uh, of a uh, Regina. She passed on her twin sisters. Uh, one, they were twins. Uh, she passed. Rachel's still alive. And Lawrence, of course, I uh, got to get a picture of him. So we put there. So my sister, she feels this is a spiritual space. So this is good. Okay. So anyway, to alter the thing, what I did was I take the white cloth, I put it down there, and then I then I just um, I just have a a shot glass of, of rum and and water and uh, the empty coffee cup, which <laughs> let it dry out. But since I'm not going to put it right there because I can't, I'm not going to be here. My sister can't, whatever. So this, see, little, this will be just upside down. So she doesn't have to deal with that, right? What she has to do is once a week just, you know, change the water in the glass and give a little shot of rum, right? That's all she has to do. And this is good. And that, that way she'll have a little ceremony, blah, 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 every second. Okay, now call her every Sunday. Hey, do it like that. Okay. So, so, so that's done. But here's the trick. It was so. Well, brother, how can you just, you know, these are long-standing traditions. How can you just alter the thing? You can't do that. The reach is coming down and beat you up. I say, no, no, they won't. <laughs> because they know that I know, and I'm here. They're there, and they understand. I got to interpret for them what's going on. I mean, but to give you what, what I'm saying, like, um, you know how they have uh, 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 the Muslims, you know, the, the you know they have the women all covered up in the burqas or whatever, or covered up like that? Well, back when that started, people were in there, they had their courtyards, you know, and the women would have to go to market, so maybe they would cover up. But they would come back, and they wouldn't be that all day long. And, you know, So if you're in, in, in the States or in New York, whatever, having to get it, whatever it is, you're wearing that all day long, which means that, say, if you're pregnant, you're not getting vitamin D. you got to adapt. 
but people they got traditional, they gotta be da, 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 da. well, that's on them. Plus, I'm just a uh, okay. Um, so, but, oh, I said, so every every day, every night, when you do that, you raise up the, the plywood and anything by putting books under it. Da, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, all kinds of you know, it's books the next the next day, you know, you, you, you put another set of books up to raise the thing up. So, finally, it comes up to like a you know, little. Some people, if you put thick books, come up to a car table. But, you know, just, just coming up to your shins. Not your shins, your, your knee or whatever. That's what I say. But one of the books I read, because like, a lot of my books are here. Yeah? I have some Frederick Douglass books. I got some, I, mean, I have all kinds of books. Encyclopedia, it is, cook, you know, Big Ten Joy of Cooking. No, no kind of books like that. But one of the groups that I use is um, Henry Duma. Um, oh, I got Geno and the Green Stone here. This is the you know, Hawk cover. This is uh, Rope of Wind. Excellent. I think there's I think should be there's a new Henry Duma um, thing coming out in the force. Should be coming out. I gotta get it, of course. But I'll be in St. Louis. I'll be hanging out with Eugene. Oh maybe. And I'll get I'll get a copy and see what happens. But look, this is one I'm favorite. Let me show you something because of what we're doing right now. Look how I fix the glass, I can't read. Okay. Now this the 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 the, the, the books introduction by Eugene Bebe. How about that? The 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 the, the, the Stories here, it's uh, 12 stories. 12 to 3. Hey, me and Henry hooked up. Um, the Marches, uh, The Eagle, The Dove, and The Blackbird, Harlem, uh, University of Man, Rope of Wind, Devil Bird, Invasion, The Lake. The Lake's my favorite story. In fact, I did a whole reading of that. Just whole, I did the prints in the background. I did one of his, I think it was The West. Maybe it was The North, you know, one of his. The, the N.E.W.S. album, and I gave it to to Loretta, uh, Loretta's Henry Dumas' uh, widow. She loved it. She shared it with her class. She does, She likes it. Okay. Um, the Distributors, that's a wild story. i tell you some other time. Um, uh, thrust, Counter Thrust, Six Days You Shall Labor, and The Voice. Okay? So these are in this book. Here's one of my, okay. There's another Henry Dumas story. If you get it, I guess it's in that other volume. This, uh, this is another volume. And Henry Dumas' story is called, if you can get it called Fawn, F-O-N, Fawn. Just look up this Henry Dumas' story. That apply. oh man, that's a great story. I'm just saying, because I like Henry Dumas. Um, so anyway, just, so then, 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 okay, so, so now I'm done. So now, you know, um, basically I'm, I'm done with that. And um, But you see, in different cultures, you're different things, okay? Like, for instance, you know, in, in, in uh, uh, like for instance, in the Mayan culture, I'm called a white world, a white world bridger. The, the color. It just means that um, the, my personality is the one that brings things together, even disparate things together, you know. And lo and behold, that's what I've been doing all my life. Um, but I want to show you something about evolution. Like I said, evolution of that, we, we, we evolve, you know what I mean? And you shouldn't stay the same thing. That's why I'm saying, I'm always evolving, you know. I, no, I can't do it. But I was going to show you something because this is really interesting. Um, my, my nom de voce. No, you have nom de plume. Yeah. You have nom de voce. <laughs> my, my, what, what, my, my radio name is my, my, my whatever name is, right? Uh, okay, it's it goes like this. It's and this is how I was reading. It comes from a it comes from a, a longer poem than I shortened the poem. This is the early '80s. I did this. I made a shorter poem that said, uh, "T from the Pattersons living on the Upper Lower East Side, taking the train to Tibet." And if you notice, the only thing that's missing is a west direction. Cause I would back then. I'm. I'm not. I'm the, the west is useless. <laughs> North, south, and east. All right, but the west useless, right? Anyway, so then I shortened it, uh, in the, I guess the late '80s, and from, from then on, I've been doing like this. I want to make it clear because people get it wrong. It looks like this. See, it's T, right, like that, from. The Pattersons, you like that? The Pattersons, yes. Pattersons, when you do it like that, the Patterson, the Patterson projects in the South Bronx is where I was, I was made. Let's put it that way, you know. Um, and so, so it's, that's what that it, it, it does, right? Then here, taking. See, I, I had the little thing so you can read it. The right train to Tibet. Okay, um, that basically means. Um, I like trains. It's to me. I travel. I want to. I go from the lowest South Bronx, right, and take the train to the highest. Tibet being the highest, you know, you can do it as 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 a uh, geologically higher or you know just spiritually higher. That's that's what this means. Okay. Now, so I've had this for years. Now my brother passed. Now I'm gonna say there was one time 
in the South Bronx, I think in front of Alexander's uh, department store. You did, there was Hearns down at like 119. Alexander's was up like uh, 151st or something like that. Um, and um, uh, Pablo Guzman, Pablo Yoruba Guzman. At the time he was working at, he was at LIB and they was having a remote broadcast there. And I used to call him all the time, you know, T from the past. Well, I used to call up all the time. Um, and so when they had this remote live thing, of course, from my own thing. Oh, by the way, so Pablo, he grew up in the Melrose Project, which is, and I grew up in the Patterson Project. This is my neighborhood site. So I was there just checking it out. And my brother appeared. Your <laughs> brother, he's this one here. He just appeared. He does that a lot. He just appeared. And I said, hey, T. He never called me T. What's the matter with this boy? See, because when we, we was raised in South Bronx, it was interesting. My family was probably one of the only families where everybody used their full name. So Gregory was Gregory. Anthony was Anthony. Lawrence was Lawrence. <laughs> Rachel and Regina. But the only one, I can see my, my, my sister, my sister's name is Mercedes, but we always called her Mercedes. So she's only had a nickname, but the nickname was just as long as the as whatever name. I don't know why that happened. So I was like, whoa. But at the same time, I started to think, why don't I use T? Why? Because it's, there was a, a, a movie, uh, Marvin Gaye's soundtrack, uh, uh, Bobby Hooks, Robert Hooks is the star, and it's called, you know, well, it's a, a, a trouble man. And the guy was T, you know, Mr. T. But no, it was T. It was just T. Right? There wasn't, there was no Mr. T there. Um, and so, so for me, see, there's a connection there. First is Marvin, of course. You know, and then it's just that, you know, it was black exploitation film because I was in the film a lot. I'm still in the film. Uh, what else was happening at that? It was a perfect coming together. But Bobby Hooks, um, he's sort of responsible for a lot of stuff. In his, uh, he, he's at Negro Ensemble. Well, he's at Negro, he's the founder of Negro Ensemble. One of the founders of him, uh, Douglas Turner Ward and uh, Gerald Crone. Right. But what uh, what happened is um, I just had it was a connection. You know, uh, so Bobby Hooks actually helped me because. Uh, there was one time, I'm sure it was him, they do this background stuff, that he, they hired me to do some modeling job or something like that, you know, a poster job. It was really interesting. What did you drop into when you dropped out of high school, right? Then you had this rough-looking kid, this ghetto kid. I remember when I when I did this modeling, I had a, I had a, a sweatshirt that was, it was actually New York City Mission Society logo shirt. So I turned it over, turned it around, so it was inside out, and I got this little scowl on my face, like really tough, tough South Bronx kid. <laughs> yeah, good model. But here's the chicken. Okay, I'm going to tell you something nobody knows. So I did that. I was about 17. Yes, 17. When I when I went, when I was went to Negro Ensemble Company with this modeling job that I think that Bobby Hooks hooked, hooked me up for, right? But I was when I was graduating, uh, I graduated from Theodore Roosevelt High School, even though the high school, the school in that area was Morris High School, but I was in a special program. I had to go all the way up to Fordham Road. So I had to get up early. So on graduation day, they had my cap and gown and everything. Like that. And I was going to um, go up uh, Third Avenue. I had to go to, uh, you know, Fordham Road. Um, but the thing is, um, uh, that the, what I, that modeling job was for was for um, Job Corps. What did you drop into when you dropped out of school? Then you had all these, like, you had, I was the black kid, they had the Asian kid, they had the white, whatever, that, 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 all, all, like that. And then, then there was, a, like, a, a storefront going up um, 30, about 147th Street or so, 148th, the, um, the right where the L used to be, whatever, right across from, I think, the Dollar Savings Bank, where it is, there was a bunch of storefronts. This is before the, this is before the riots, really. There was 64 riots, but the, the storefronts still didn't have the gates and stuff like that. So in this like storefront thing, they had all those posters. What did you drop into when you dropped out of high school? So if you can imagine, this is like I really get this image. So I was there alone. This is early in the morning because you know whatever. And so I went there and I looked at my poster. So here's my poster with this kid that was. What did you do when you dropped out of you know school? When you dropped out of high school, and here's me like on this through the glass superimposed. You can see it superimposed of that thing with a cap and gown for high school. It's an amazing image. And it's all, it's all mine, so nobody knows. I mean, I've seen this. It's all mine. It's unbelievable. I mean, just like with the... With just like with Henry Dumas, this man. Okay, so that's what it looks like that. Now, so just my brother passing this a couple of days ago, about three days ago, because uh, we're in the middle of this nine nights, it just came to me. You know? I think my brother was just speaking to me. It came to me that I need to... This needs to be evolved. So this thing I changed. I mean, now it looks like T... That's like that from the past century. Taking the, then the train is another a big T there. It's all run together. And another big T 
for Tibet. Now, I usually put a dot there to end it, but I'm thinking of either putting a dot or not putting the dot in the period there. I'm not sure. Ever sure. But if you see, this is these are three T's, right? Three capital T's. It just works better for me, and I got to make it so that. Anyway, now what, it means nothing to you. I understand that. But you see, three is one of my numbers. So that was like the perfect thing. It's an evolution. It's an, I, I believe in evolution. Okay? You know, the evolution. I just believe in evolution. So, so that that all happens. And uh, and so this whole thing is sort of weirdly uh, complete for me, which I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, you know? So I'm met, uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy. Um, my brother, who we hadn't seen in a long time, he got to connect with my sister as well as uh, my other sister, uh, uh, um, um, Rachel, who's still alive, you know, she's in up, up, upstate New York. I should talk to her over the phone. So that was really good. So he sort of connected with the immediate family before, and we all, so it's like, you want to see how things are like, wow. So I'm really just eternally grateful for that opportunity. Let's put it that way. So um, I just needed to share that with you. Uh, I think I need to share it with you. Just to, to let you know. Now you know it all from me. Everything about me well, that I want you to know. T from the Pattersons taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.